Well, that was a good end to a week after having been so bearish uh, last week and then uh, starting off the Labor Day after Labor Day. We really, really good finish to the week ahead of a really important inflation report next week. Uh, we're going to break down the, the bullish signals that we got and then what bullish signals we need to see next week to really set us up for a tremendous end of the year. We could really kind of set up for, like we've seen good bullish ends of the year in the past. Um, we could really set ourselves up for what could be a tremendous rally into the end of the year uh, with, with the signals that I, that I show you uh, that we're still missing um, that off the charts from this week. We got, we've kind of got a little taste. We got some things. I'm going to show you what they are, but I'm going to show you what we need to see uh, to really solidify this little rally we've had um, and then go on. I'm going to also show you why that might not be the high probability scenario, based, even though we had a three-day rally of over 4%. So I'll show you why uh, for that there, and then talk about uh, what's driving the price action this week. A little bit of different, the different kind of a risk-on move than what we've seen in the past. How significant is that? And we'll talk about how to trade uh, that, this environment with a trade idea that looks almost exactly like the market as a whole. Uh, so we'll talk about how to trade it uh, with uh, this stock uh, using as a proxy. So let's go ahead and get started. Today is Friday, September the 9th, 2022. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. All right, before we get started, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel with this icon here in the bottom right corner of your screen. You can also hit that thumbs up icon, like our video today, comment on anything that stood out to you. Join our website at MarketScholars.com up there in the top right corner of your screen. Follow me on Twitter for more content between the videos from day to day and join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. All right, if you're watching our video on our blog, as long with, along with these other things over here on the right to check out, come down here, click on that heart, it opens up this tab, hit that like button. Same thing with the thumbs up icon, hit that thumbs up icon. Again, the more you do that, it helps get our content out to all of our followers on these social media platforms. All right, let's take a look now at the S&P 500 um, with the market forecast indicator like we always do. There's our three-day rally we had to finish the week. Near-term line getting up into the above the 90th percentile, good bullish result there. Interestingly enough, out of all these instances that we've had, you know, three day, we've had, this is our eighth three day rally of 4% or more over the course of this entire year. Uh, for those who don't follow me on Twitter, I tweeted that out Friday. Um, so this is the eighth time. So this is hardly new to, for us to be this bullish. We've, we've had, I mean, this, we're barely above 4%. We've, a lot of those eight times are actually more than this. So this is a really good return, but the difference between this one and all the others um, you can see when you get like this bear tag, so this is actually one of them right here, then you notice you can keep going. This was, this was another one, we got a bear tag, and then we at least stayed higher until we finally broke down. Uh, we had a couple in here, this was a three day rally of 4% or more, and we didn't get a bear tag, and we fell. Uh, same thing here, this was a 4% a move right here, um, yeah, this one. Um, and it fell. And then, of course, this three-day rally actually did change. This three-day rally right here got a bear tag, and we continued higher. Uh, but this three-day rally right here of 4% or more did not, and we fell. Uh, and so here's another one where we did not get a bear tag, which means not only did the intermediate line not get above 20, which is, it was above 20 on all these others, not only did it not get above 20, um, but it also didn't even come close to the moving average. We're still more than 1% below the moving average. That's pretty significant in terms of, again, how bearish we are um, and how bullish that move was in the context of how bearish we were and whether or not it was bullish enough to change uh, this bearishness. Um, so, so that's what the market forecast looks like. I mean, that looks good, but the market sentiment's rising. Uh, looks like it's got potential to get up there, but you've really got to get going on this intermediate line and still stuck easily in bearish territory. It's in oversold levels. Now, the NASDAQ's not. Uh, when you look at the NASDAQ, um, excuse me, the NASDAQ, is, was it the Russell 2000? Uh, maybe it was, maybe it was earlier, uh, earlier in the day. Um, the NASDAQ actually is, um, you know, again, you're above 90%. Uh, it, it got the cluster to its intermediate line is still in lower reversal zone. Its market sentiment line is rising, uh, close to getting above 60. It's probably going to need a good bullish run here to get there. I think it was the Russell 2000 that was uh, close. Maybe it was the S&P actually that was up above it briefly. Um, but now it's like, again, not even the Russell got up there. Uh, and you, you did get a yellow line on, which means that the, S the moving average is moving up and down, up and down, up and down here very slightly. 
Um, but again, no bear tag. So it was a great rally off that cluster, but it wasn't enough of a rally, especially with the momentum mine, the near term line spiking here. It wasn't enough of a rally to change the trajectory of this move. We didn't get a bear tag, right? These bear tags uh, obviously can be bearish uh, when you're on these bearish trends, but you also get a bear tag before you start the bullish moves. Um, you always do, just like you get a bull tag before you start the bearish moves. They're generally bullish bounce signals, um, but they're also the signal that starts the bearish move. And same thing, it's also the signal that starts the bullish move. And this one you can see, start instead of bouncing, it started the bearish move. Um, uh, and that's what we're missing here. And it would be sure it would be nice if we actually had that, uh, and we don't. So let's take a look now at the weekly chart for uh, the S&P 500. <clears throat> and you'll notice here that um, the intermediate line, like the momentum and near-term line rally, it was a good kind of engulfing type pattern. You see how we did get above the 38% retracement here of this current intermediate run that we had been, that we're still in the process of retracing. Um, the, we're not above that 38% line, however, of the long-term move. So we need to really follow through with this bullishness uh, next week. Kind of like how we needed to follow through with that bullishness uh, last week. And of course, this week, we actually do have like the CPI data could really fuel uh, a run to the upside if the markets like it, right? It doesn't matter what it does, like it's still going to go up, like the price index itself is going to go up, the growth rate will come down, but the price index is still going to go up and still become parabolic. Um, and we, I don't know if we necessarily want the price index to go down because that's deflationary. Uh, and so if it doesn't go down, remember now, um, we just settle in at higher price levels at, across the board. That's you know, we all think that, oh, because gasoline prices come down, prices everywhere come down. But that's not the case. The CPI rarely, if you look at the CPI index, this is actually the, the PCE index. Uh, so this is the core PCE, um, does not include energy or food, of course. And you notice it never goes negative. Like it, it, when it does, it's recessionary and it's very brief, like, but it never goes negative. So here we've gone, you know, parabolic here um, you know, the higher levels that we've had, higher growth levels we've had on a month to month basis uh, in a long, long time, especially over, I mean, we've essentially gone parabolic. This is what it looks like, the actual index itself. We've gone parabolic. So unless we get um, some negative numbers to get back to trend line growth, like then we'll stay at these higher prices, that these parabolic level prices will just stay there for a while. And you notice that, again, it, it never goes negative it generally stays positive by you know 0.2 percent or you know in that area or a little bit below 0.2 percent. Of course, I mean, that's going to be the big market driver <clears throat> next week. So we need to really follow through with this bullish. I mean, it's very weak bullishness when you look at it from this perspective, but it's bullishness nonetheless. And we need to get follow kind of follow up with that and get up there, considering that we never did get above two and a half percent above the moving average, and we got that bear tag, uh, which is bearish, right? Unless it Unless you continue to run, it's bear, it can be really bearish on the weekly chart. If you go back to my market forecast video on that Friday, so it would have been you know, the week of the 8th, August the 8th, that Friday, uh, I talk about that bear tag and what all others in the past look like. So go back and check that out and what would have been what the uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12th, the August the 12th video. So like, you know, we need to get that change and we did get back below two and a half and we're a smidgen up above it. Uh, let's follow through on that and we can really feel confident about things turning around. Same thing here. When you look at the weekly chart on this, we did not get a lower close. We got a higher close. That generally can turn into a transition candle. It didn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily turn into a reversal, but it generally can turn into a reversal, like a, 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 a move back to the upside. So, so because you know, like where we're sitting at right now, the, the Hakanashi open next week will be right around 40.30 and we're trading at 40.67. So we are you know, looking at a bullish or transitionary candle next week if we can really follow through and keep going with a, with a green arrow on this chart and a rising PPR already. So you already have two of the three things that you need to see here. The third thing being that bullish candle on the Hakanashi basis, right? You know, a good, good reversal close you know, up above all these bodies. You see how we got these bodies here, but then you got this close, which was a reversal above all these other bodies. Once you got the higher close, you got the transition, you got the reversal, you know, that's, then we continued higher for multiple weeks after that. 
Um, this is what the candles look like. So this would have been the week of 718. So this is what that looked like right there. So then we can really follow through uh, with some bullishness there. So we don't have that yet, um, but that's what you would like to see next week, right? We would like to see um, a close up above this week's body, um, up above that open. And then we'd really feel good about, you know, multiple weeks going forward from there. All right, let's take a look at the three green arrow charts. So again, when we're bullish, whoops, not this one. When we're bullish, we have three green arrows, right? Just like this on 719 is when we went bullish last time. We had three green arrows, it took off. We obviously don't have, we have one green arrow, but only on the S&P. We don't have green arrows on any of these other indexes. So we're not quite there yet. Um, we're close, but we're not quite there uh, on that reversal. We need to follow through on this next week and feel, feel, and again, like if we can follow through with a good week next week and we start a new intermediate rally, like the latest ones have gone um, about a month in length, but when you get a good inter, inter, intermediate runoff of the correction low, and this would be the correction low. I mentioned back here that I felt like this was the washout low, but I didn't feel like that was the correction low. If we start a new intermediate run, that would make this the correction low with that cluster there. So even though it's a higher low, it'd be the correction low. And then we can really start, you know, a good intermediate rally from here uh, again to the upside. Again, it would... You know, you would you would get three, you would get your green arrows, right, and, and a green line, um, you know, the intermediate line getting up above its market sentiment, up above 50. You get dark green shading, you'd be above the moving average. Then you'd be starting, you'd, that would be coming off the correction low point. And these intermediate rallies that, that, cut, that start these moves, they tend to last like four to five months. So when that intermediate line gets up above here, then it will be bullish for months, like into the end of the year. Like, and, and more than likely get us back up to 4,800 and beyond. I mean, that's the most likely scenario if by next week we can get that started, right? So if we can get three green arrows on this chart, uh, whereas right now we only have the one, we need to get those three there. Get that, get above the moving average. Get the stochastics is almost there too across these. So you're almost at two. Um, and then now just get above the moving average, especially get above it by two and a half percent or more. And we're golden at that point. Uh, looking at the uh, these moving averages, we're above the 17 day, but we're still not above the 30. Getting above, the, see on the 719, we got above the 8, the 17, and the 30, and barely above the 50, all in the same day. When you cross multiple moving averages, you're really bullish. We crossed above the 8 last week, we crossed above the 50 and the 17 this week, but it's the 17 and the 30 that you'd like to cross at the same time. So, I mean, this is good. Your MACD is positive and you're above the 17 day moving average. That's good. But we've seen that before, right? We saw that over here. We saw that over here. We've seen that before where we've gotten above the 17 day moving average, like right here. And we haven't been able to keep going, right? With the MACD positive um, because you weren't above the 30 as well. And that's the case again. We're not above the 30 as well. We're, and then we're at that 38% Fibonacci retracement. We're still below the value area. So that means 70% of this year's volume is still on top of us. Uh, instead of underneath us where that would be really, really bullish. Um, so we're not quite there yet either. As bullish as the signal as that is so far, it's not very strong of a bullish signal. And you can see when you look at the stochastics on this chart, you know, we're not above that average yet. I mean, it's great. We're not in bearish territory anymore. You're at 41, so you're barely above 40, but we're not above 60 and we're not above that line. And that's what you need to be if you're going to be really strongly bullish. Uh, the other thing, um, the whole... Uh, we do have the 20-day uh, hold did turn up, the parabolic star did drop, and we did get a bullish Hakanashi candle that did close above. See, you got that, that body right there, you got the transition candle, and then you got a close up above that body. So you got that on the hull, on the daily hull. Now let's follow through. And interestingly enough, you're already 4% above, which when you look at, you know, take out the, um, take out the, you know, the big move here, uh, which is so crazy because that's about as big of a move off the 200 day holes we got coming off COVID. Um, and COVID, we stayed above it for months. We're already right back down to it. Um, but take that out, being up above 4%, might take that move out there. Being above 4%, you can see when you're bullish trend, this is about as big as you get above the, the uh, 200 day hole. So, I mean, this is pretty significantly bullish already as it is. Um, obviously not compared to this one, but that was extreme. Again, very similar to coming off the COVID low point. But unfortunately, like we, again, we're already back down here. And that's, 
it took months to get back down to the, you know, the 200 day hole moved up to it. Um, whenever we got, you know, four or five months off of that COVID low point. Uh, so it's crazy how fast we dropped there. Um, when you look at the, um, let's see some of these other oscillators, the, the, the positive indicator jumped above 25. That's great. But the other half of that is the negative needs to drop below 20 and it hasn't. So, so we, it's actually still above 25 itself. That's not necessarily the bullish yet. Um, when you look at the RSI and the CCI, they're both above the midpoints of their charts, but neither one of them are in bullish territory yet. Like you'd have to get above six. So it's, I mean, again, a 4% rally in three days. I mean, if you didn't see my tweet, um, this is what that chart looks like. I mean, it's not common for us to get this big of a move in three sessions. I mean, look at that. Like we never get it during a bullish move. It typically only get it coming off of a correction low point um, but, or an intermediate low point in this case. Um, but in, and during these bullish rallies. So again, a 4% move, the eighth one of the year. Like again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is, you know, that we've only had two of them that were smaller than this. This was 403. And that one was 407.17. So these are the only two that were less. Um, the other five were all bigger than this rally. So this is hardly unique that we've been this bullish here. Um, and I'm afraid we weren't bullish enough to really change things around. Um, like I said, the, the, as bullish as we were, the RSI and the CCI did not get into bullish levels. See, the, some of these other times, like right here, you can see... Uh, here, let me get this cursor here. So on that three-day rally of 4% or more, the CCI was well above 100. It got to 161. Uh, on this one right here, it got to 143. On this rally, it got to 184. On this rally, it also failed at 15. And you can see we stopped going up. Uh, failed uh, just below zero. Uh, this rally, it also failed just below zero. And it didn't go up, didn't follow through. This one, uh, where it did continue to go up, we got up to 107. And then this one uh, here, uh, where we failed, we didn't get up above 100. We got above zero, we didn't get above 100, and it failed. So again, like those others, where we didn't get to above 100 on the four-day rally, it, it seems like we would most likely fail at this one. The Ichimoku cloud, obviously we're not bearish anymore. Um, and we're not strongly bearish. In fact, there's no trend. We're back below 50 here, uh, back below minus one on this indicator, or back above minus one. We also don't have a bullish trend going either. And we're, we're above the green line, but we're not, and, the, and above the cloud, which is a good thing. The red line's not above the price yet, and we're not above the blue line. So, you know, again, it looks great. Considering that we're up 4% in three days, it should look a lot better than this on a lot, on a lot of these indicators, and we're just not looking. Here's the Bollinger bandwidth. It's great. We got above the upper half. The bandwidth though is really high and it's falling. If we're going to start a new leg higher like we did on 719, back then the, the band was small and then it rose. We're not small and rising here. We're high and actually turning down slightly. And we're not in the upper quartile of the bandwidth. So, you know, if we were, we'd be up above this 23% line. But we're not. And so we're not nearly as bullish as we really need to be. Um, to get going. So let's take a look at the intraday chart. Um, we did get a higher high and we get a higher low. We did close above yesterday's high. We have a gap though that we didn't fill in and that's not a runaway gap. It doesn't, it wasn't big enough, right? This, this gap down here wasn't big enough. It wasn't even one standard deviation. Um, so more than likely that's a, that's a common gap, which means we're going to fill that in. Um, and that's unfortunate because we can't fill that in. If we're going to be bullish, we can't get back. We have to be in the lower half and the upper half of this chart. Um, you can see by the Arun indicator, by next Tuesday, um, the, the red line will be below. Let's see, the green line will be below to zero by next Tuesday. On Monday, it'll be at five. And then on Tuesday, it'll be at zero. That means that, means that the four-week high, when that green line gets to zero, that means the four-week high point will be on the first day of the chart. Okay. Um, this chart, the low tag, needs to move further to the left too. And the more it moves to the left, uh, the more that this Arun indicator will drop below 70. So that will happen on Wednesday. Barring a new four-week high or low point, on Tuesday the green line will hit zero, and on Wednesday the red line will hit below 70. And again, CPI comes out Tuesday morning. 
So if we are able to you know, get that pattern, if we can by Tuesday, by Wednesday, when that line hits, if we can get to a um, up into this part of the chart by the end of Tuesday, then you're going to feel really good about getting a new high point, a new four week high. And then which means that's the bullish signal, right? That is the signal um, where, again, the red drops below 70 uh, and this keeps going down. The green line hits the zero, but once it hits the zero and jumps up to 70, like it did over here on July 20th, then you have your new trend going, right? You have your new trend going to the upside. So that's what we need to see. Um, and, and so that's, but again, if we fill in that gap on Monday and we come down on Monday and then maybe even by the end of Tuesday, we're down in the lower half of the four week range, then it's gonna be very unlikely we get that signal and more likely we end up getting a new spike on the red line back to 100, right? A new low point. So that's what we need to see on Monday and Tuesday to feel really good about next week being a, a significant change in direction to the upside for this trend and get us going where we failed, you know, get us going back to that 4,200 level where we have, where we failed and had a fake out, right? If we get back to that level and try it again, it's rare that you get multiple fake outs in a row at the same level. Usually, you, you know, after such a, you know, a significant fake out, usually if you get there again, relatively soon, it help, it does break out the next time. So we feel really, really good about the bullishness over the long term if that happens again by the end of next week, right? Uh, I don't think it will. I'm leaning in the direction that it's not going to be the case, um, but that's why I still have, you know, some negative delta, my, my hedge position in my class portfolio that we've been talking about. Uh, you can see the the um, volatility has not dropped very far. It's not dropped below 90 yet. So it needs to drop down here. Uh, we need to get the volatility, the VIX um, to, we need to get the VIX to come and get below this 30 day moving average. It did really good to get below the 17. Now it needs to break that and bam. But if we bounce off of this, again, you see how important it is. Break back down, get below 20. And now we're talking, right? Now we're talking about going somewhere uh, and being bearish here on volatility for a while, especially now that that um, that the correlation has gone back to being strongly positive. So that would mean that the the unfortunate part of that though is that that the VIX the VIX it's going to be hard for the VIX to go down too much because the VIX is already down you know very very low compared to you know where it's been in the past, right? This is a relatively low level. I mean it can go down to 80, but 80 is a low level for this. So it's, it's not very common to be this low. Uh, we were in 13 and 14 because we were in a QE environment. Um, you know, so very, very low volatility there. You wouldn't expect that to be the case again. Um, you know, outside of a QE, QE environment, which obviously we're not in, we're actually in a rising rate environment, a QT environment, um, those tend to be more volatile, right? The last, the last QT environment we had was 2018. The rising rates in a quantitative tightening environment you can see that you know we never did get the 84 on the VVIX. So you know if VVIX rises off these low levels with volatility because they're highly correlated, then, it, then again that means volatility is going up, and that's obviously tends to be more bearish than bullish. So what do you think? Do you agree with that assessment? Do you disagree? Uh, let me know in the comment section below, especially if you disagree. What charts or indicators are you looking at that suggest why you're either a lot more bullish than I am or a lot more bearish than I am? All right, now let's take a look at what's driving the price action this week. And you can see initially it was falling commodities um, that really kind of helped propel the stocks to the upside. Remember, that's, that's the narrative, right? Falling commodities will bring rates down, um, will bring rates down and, and, um, and the dollar down, right? And, and you know, everything else will kind of settle in. Well, the dollar was down this week. But the yields were up and commodities were finished the week actually up. Now they finished relatively lower compared to equities, but they were above uh, treasuries, outpaced treasuries and outpaced uh, the dollar. So the big rally here in the last day, um, in fact, this was about your typical, very, very typical risk on day here that you had today uh, where equities and commodities rallied. So remember, the narrative isn't that commodities jump higher the narrative is that, um, and that pushes stocks higher, and that's, you know, and, and bonds underperform, um, the yield, that means that yields are down a little bit. Um, we want, like, for equities to be bullish, we want commodities to not be so bullish. And commodities, 
they jumped up on Friday. They had a nice little bounce um, back above the 200-day moving average that they were trying to break down this week because that's what was driving the initial bullishness was it was breaking down. Now it's back up. It's not above the 17. It's not above all those lines. But you would expect that if we do get above those lines, then that will put pressure, renewed pressure on equities, just like we've seen, right? To see the, the pressure there. And you, but you can see the big jump this week, very, very, very light volume um, that you had down there. The other big move you had was on the dollar, right? The dollar, uh, we've been above the eight-day moving average for a long time here, multiple weeks. Well, this time, um, this time it's finally down below the eight. Now it's now below the seven, but after getting that engulfing pattern here, it's now down below the eight day uh, moving average there. And you'd have to draw, redraw these lines, uh, activate this up to the upside up there, and then activate this one and throw that up. So these are multiple. So the green you can see is based off of this rally uh, that the dollar's kind of taken off there. And then the, uh, the orange is based off the market sentiment rally that took off over here in 2021. So uh, you can see it's great that we're down. It's not down below the 17. It's not down below these 23% lines, but that's where it really starts to move uh, to the downside. So so that but by, by a weaker dollar, remember that actually press that actually pushes commodities higher. Um, and you remember that the right now what's really bringing inflation growth levels down, not inflation itself, but inflation growth levels down is falling commodities. So if the dollar starts to really weaken here, um, because the strong dollar's really pressured equities all year, if the strong dollar weakens, remember that typically pushes commodity prices higher. Um, and then that will put a renewed focus on higher inflation levels and of course more rate hikes. And so that's the uh, catch 22 that we're in between a lot of these different uh, asset classes. Let's take a look at the sector moves here this week. Uh, so let's come here to the sector rotation, not the grid. Sorry, let's go to the sector comparison. And let's look at just this week. So we'll come down here to nine, five, and come here. You can see the biggest gainers today uh, initially was utilities uh, for most of this week until today. Um, and then you can see the utilities ended up matching the market's return, still up three and a half percent. Real estate ended up being pretty bullish too for most of the week. Those are interest rate sensitive sectors that you don't typically associate with bullish markets like this. They tend to lag behind and the markets are bullish. Um, staples and energy lag, uh, that's, that they've been bullish when the markets have been down. Uh, not surprising they would underperform when markets are rallied. But what's interesting is communication services and technology, they lagged most of this week too. Tech, uh, discretionary did very well, but they were the only ones uh, that did very well. Uh, materials uh, didn't match uh, energy and then healthcare, again, can be typically a safe haven area, you know, sitting right there with financials and those aren't typical. So it's, it's not your typical run where technology, discretionary, communication services, which make up a large portion of the S&P, make up about 50% of the NASDAQ 100. You know, those are the th three things you typically wanna see up on top when you're strongly bullish. So again, it kind of puts into question just how strong and bullish we were over these past three days um, when we weren't that bullish going in uh, to those three days. So in fact, if I just took off um, 9.5, the Labor Day, and we came here to Wednesday, so now we're just looking at the three-day rally itself um, again, you can see utilities did well going into here um, that it lagged behind here today, uh, kind of matching industrials and real estate there. Um, but technology, again, had, having lagged so far behind the first two days, uh, to, the move today wasn't really strong enough to get it up to the where XLY is uh, and above financials, and above materials. So not really your typical bull market rally here. Um, and, you know, again, when you are going to be bullish, you're going to look for, um, let's see here, it'd be, um, yeah, this one right here. You know, we want to see the cues really take off uh, to the upside versus IWM. And you notice, you know, it didn't. Like, in fact, we're still below the eight-week moving average. That's not strongly bullish. Um, you also see, too, uh, I've, I, sh I tweeted out about this chart about the, sentiment being as bearish as it was there. Uh, you want to see the skew get back above its moving average. And it didn't even move them. It didn't even, hasn't even twitched on that rally. 
Uh, you look at the new highs and new lows, and you wanted to see it get above uh, the moving average, get above zero, and get going again. It got above the moving average, but it didn't get above zero. Um, the McClellan oscillator, you want to see, you know, kind of this breadth really take off to the upside. Uh, and it got to minus six, but still not positive yet. It's the, it's the only time, again, out of the eight, that we had the three-day rally of 4% or more not get the McClellan oscillator up of um, zero. It's the first time. All the other times where it, almost, where it only got barely above zero, uh, we faltered. Right, so again, you would expect, you know, considering that the summation index has gone negative this week, you would expect the, the potential for that to continue to falter, unless we can really bust up to 100 uh, again by the end of the week and get that breath thrust with all the other signals we talk about and really change this, this uh, direction around here. All right, for our trade idea of the day, I wanted to take a look at Adobe. So let's take a look at Adobe here. Uh, it looks almost exactly like the broader market, right? So if you take a look, like we got three-day rally. Um, again, so that kind of ended the bearishness. But, but, I mean, it looks almost exactly. But we're not necessarily bullish. Uh, you look at this chart here. You know, again, we got a great, we got a higher close. But we haven't turned it around. We, got the, we didn't even get a green arrow yet um, on there. You look at the three green arrow chart. Uh, three green arrow chart here eventually there we go so you know we got two green arrows so we were close on the S&P we got two here but we don't have the third uh, we are up above um, you are up above the 17 day moving average but you're not above the 50 or the 30 and uh, you got a really strong a good uh, MACD you got that point of control so up above us and again like I said very very similar to the broad mark the DMI uh, positive is above 25, but the negative is not down below 25. Uh, your RSI, uh, same thing, you're, you're out of bearish territory, but you're not really strongly bullish. Uh, then you look at the Bollinger bandwidth here, and you can see that, again, a very, very high bandwidth. Um, you know, it's very hard to start bullish trends when you're that high in a bandwidth, especially if you're not in the upper quartile of the bandwidth, which would be means that you're up in this area. So we're not quite there yet. But when you have a high bandwidth that's falling, it typically means you're consolidating. And so what I'd like to do in those environments, when you have a very, very high bandwidth like that, and you start consolidating, is to do an iron condor spread. So I'll sell the 355, sell the low 20 delta, sell the 355, buy the 350, come over here, sell the 3, 440, buy the 445. That gives me this, this um, spread down here. We position size fully, because uh, we don't have to worry about earnings before October expiration. And, and you can see where those break-evens are right there. So we've pretty much traded in this range where my break-evens are for the last one, two, three, four, going on five expiration cycles. So if we get to six, then we make our return on that trade. That's kind of the idea. So it kind of gives us a way to, be, to make a trade when we're not bearish anymore because of this nice run we've made, but we're not quite really bullish yet either uh, to the upside. So we'll make this trade until we are. All right, well, that wraps us up for today. You've heard from me now. Now I want to hear from you. Use that link popping out in the top right corner of your screen. That takes you to our Market Outlook forums. Open up any new thread with any questions or comments you have. Reply to anybody else's thread. And let's keep this conversation going in between videos. As always, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that thumbs up icon. Comment on the video. Have a great rest of your weekend, everybody. And we'll see you all on Monday.